Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. So we have a couple upcoming events. We have ONS uh, Europe coming up in Amsterdam from September 25th through 27th. We have uh, a main presentation that is going to be uh, that is going to be done by both me and Kyle. So if you are going to be in ONS Amsterdam, we would uh, we would love to have you there. Um, the information that we're going to be covering is uh, is all information that you are all probably familiar with. But I think it'd also be a good opportunity to further discuss and clarify and um, and so, but yeah, we would love to see uh, you know any anyone who um, who's present here. We would love to see you there. Thanks, Sam. I'll be there. I'm looking forward to meet you, Ramki from uh, Bimber. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, and in terms of. Uh, there's there's also an opportunity for for speaking at uh, the FDIO mini summit as well. So if you want, so we have a KubeCon China coming up. Uh, I I don't know if we have any talks in there. Uh, Ed, Ed should know, uh, and Ed will hop on in a short while, so we can we can ask him. We have KubeCon Se Seattle coming up. We've put in some uh, some talks there. We won't know until a little while whether the talks have been accepted. Um, but we have a few talks that have been submitted uh, by various people. And finally, uh, running at the same or right at the same time as KubeCon Seattle at at KubeCon Seattle is the FDIO Mini Summit. And so the call for papers closes on October 5th. So if you would like to talk about a FIDO related integration and looking at you, Tom, <laughs> uh, please um, please go ahead and submit. So actually, I think Tom's already submitted. <laughs> yes, uh, Frederick, there's also, um, maybe this is looking too far ahead, but February, I found it in FOSTEM. Um, there is going to be a um, NF NFV dev room, um, and um, uh, so uh, they're they're inviting talks uh, for that. I'll, I'll post the the contact information for submitting um, uh, uh, submitting on the, on the chat here, or in the minutes. Just a minute. Cool. So I've added that as the upcoming events, and we can uh, we can update that with information um, as we go along. Okay. So uh, we also have Envoy Con coming up, and I'm also unfamiliar if we have any papers in there. I. I'm not aware of any at, at this point of any talks that have been submitted to that, uh, but that may be interesting for some of the people who are who are involved here as well. Uh, so, in terms of, um, so I'm going to switch it up a little bit. So I'm going to so historically we do the action items before, but I find that we off, often run out of time to discuss other items that uh, that are. Uh, that are important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk, have us go over some of the uh, the main topics first, and then we can follow up with the action items on the important ones. So, and I would like to have Ed here for one of the conversations. So I'm going to put that at the end. So that particular one is going to be on. Uh, so we're reviewing the uh, the APIs and architecture. Uh, so just uh, if so just a little bit of background. So uh, the initial set of APIs that we created were the, literally like the first thing that we we added to the project. We've learned a lot since then, and we're finding ways to to simplify simplify and clarify the uh, the APIs, and ideally uh, make them better. So uh, we. So anyways, with that, um, so let's start with the. Uh, VPP cross connect with uh, with Tom. So, how is um, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing and uh, and then we'll we'll take it from there. 
So the the objective is to take a simple case and put facts on the ground showing what we can do with deploying something um, in a real world data plane. So uh, VPP is relatively easy because it has a Go um, you know, interface and there's a Go agent available in Legato. I thought that I would start with uh, just basically a layer two connection to see if we could get um, deploy a layer two co connection entirely with NSM, you know, stand it up and break it down and be able to show passing traffic through it. So it's a simple test case, but, it, but it'll include most of the elements for a VPP connection at any other, um, uh, any other level in the stack, as well as perhaps a few, uh, be related to future doing the same thing to OVS VPDK or another uh, data plane. Okay, cool. And uh, something I've agreed to help Tom with is um, creating the network service endpoint. So, yeah. yes, I'm um, being relatively new with this. Um, and I realize I actually got a question on the chat about how far I've gone um, or, and whether there was a dev uh, branch or a, a pull request yet. Says so not yes. I, I, at this point, and carefully watching the discussion about the protocol between the uh, NS, NSM endpoint and the extended um, or um, NSM to see exactly how uh, how this will fit in. Yeah, and um, so so we'll, so what you're saying then is uh, well, part of it is uh, is going to be um, working with uh, with me on the creating a network service endpoint but the but basically the outcomes of that uh, architecture review uh, is uh, is an, is an important outcome for uh, for you in this scenario exactly so yeah and just to just to make it clear one of our one of our uh, goals uh, with that architectural review uh, is that we want to create a um, document or uh, some literature that describes the architecture in more detail and, and with more uh, con with with some of the patterns that we expect to see so because uh, right now uh, it, a lot of it is is uh, in the heads of um, me and Ed, and so so even other people who are who are working intimately in the in the project um, uh, need more context as well in order to be successful. So part of the goal is to be able to give that context and so with sufficient detail, so that we can uh, so that uh, we can give that uh, effectively give guidance and has to like how we expect it to work and, and, that, and simultaneously get feedback as well because um, the more people who understand it, the, the better, feed, and the, the more and better feedback we can get as well. So, uh, um, okay, well, we'll, my, my time, just, just so you know, my time is gonna be a little bit limited up to ONS uh, uh, demo, but after the, after the ONS time, Rather, sorry for the, the ONS conference. But after the ONS conference, then my time should free up a lot, and uh, let's work closely together and iterate on this as well, so in order to get the VPP cross connect done. Does that sound like a good plan? Agreed. Cool. So. Hello, folks. Hello, Ed. Hey. So well, we shuffled around a few things in the agenda so that we can. Make sure that you're that you're here for for things. So we we're just finishing up the discussion on VPP cross connect that uh, that Tom is heading up. So um, okay. So the next item on the agenda was the ONS Amsterdam uh, review. So one one item is that Kyle and I and need to finish uh, our presentation. So. Um, so one of the questions that that um, 
that I have then is this particular scenario is like, I know we have limited time left, but is there anything that we want to do or discuss or be on the same page about for ONS Amsterdam? Are you sort of asking like, are there any other stories we would like to tell that we, we don't currently have collateral for or? And that could be, that could be it. It could be stories we want to tell. So a little, it's a bit unfortunate. We have about really, 30 really minutes. Quick, whoever, whoever is sharing, you're browsing through your email right now on the share. Which is probably not what you meant to be doing. <laughs> uh, good catch. So you probably want to stop sharing and then we can get someone to share the agenda and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I was just trying to get the contact information for um, for FOSTEM um, dev, uh, dev room. But I'll look it up later and add it. All right, that's cool. I mean, I don't have any problem with it. It's just I've been that guy sharing things I shouldn't share. And so I try and be helpful. <laughs> I forgot I was sharing. Now you know all my secrets. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. Cool. Yeah, so it could be, uh, it, it could, so there's a challenge that we have in that we only, for, in the interest of trying to, to create more presentation slots um, in the limited amount of time, uh, they've, the organizers have reduced, has over time been reducing the size of their of the talks. So for example, the talks used to be an hour and then at, uh, at uh, Open Source Summit, the talk that I gave was 40 minutes. This talk is going to be 30 minutes. <laughs> and so, so we have to get a Effectively, we're going to end up do, we're going to end up doing something like the ninety eight slides in twenty minutes, uh, probably at, as time moves on. It can be done. So, <laughs> but um, um, yeah. So so we so we need to be very careful as to how we how we do this because we only it's not only do we only, do we only have 30, 30 minutes. It's also we have to. Uh, we also have a varying degrees of. Um, of expertise, so so we will also have to take that into into account. Um, but I, I I think what we should do is um, is Kyle and I can give the initial basic. This is what it is. Maybe go over one of the um, one of the use cases. Do an architecture diagram showing what it looks like. Could drive into one of the use cases and discuss, or maybe the other way around. Drive into some of the <laughs> use cases like Sarah or so on with the VPN. Yeah. And. Um, and then uh, direct them, find a way to direct people to help find a network service mesh champion who can go more in, in detail, which doesn't have to be me or Kyle. Uh, anyone who's there who's in this conversation can, can help with that as well. Um, and, but effectively, we want people to, to work out how to, how to find us and how to get involved. And I think that to me, that's the most important part is how do we get people involved? Because the more people that we have typing uh, and the more people that we have understanding and developing network service endpoints or, or ENSMs or so on, the better. So uh, effectively, we want to try to build that community. So how about we do this as well? Um, so, Kyle, uh, Kyle, hey Frederick, I, I just realized I was talking on mute. Sorry. Uh, no worries. I, 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 I was going to say I totally agree with you. And you somehow know, the um, audio is badly broken. I don't know. I'm say maybe it's uh, my problem, or I don't know. It's like everybody is facing the same same problem. The audio um, has sounded okay. That doesn't yeah, mean it's yeah, I haven't had any problems. Yeah, I can hear Kyle well. Yeah, um, so and Frederick, you and Ed and everyone else, actually even Ramki, even you, you yourself are fine. Yeah, one thing you may want to try is, um, I don't know if you're dialed in on a phone or, or, or over, um, or over the, the internet, um, but, but sometimes one or the other is better, I don't know. Okay, okay, okay. I'm dialed on my phone, maybe the, it's my VOIP problem then, <laughs> could be. Yeah, thanks. Uh, oddly enough, recently I've actually had better luck with the, the internet than I have with a phone sometimes, so. <laughs> wow, okay. Now it's all better, actually. Last uh, couple of minutes was really bad. Now it's like perfect. Yeah, thanks. Oh, glad that it's working well for you. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> Excellent.
So I'll just I'll just summarize it. So Frederick, I, just br briefly bringing it back, I, I was going to agree with with everything you were saying. And 30 minutes is is tight, and I like the idea of the main kind of the main point being, you know, here's what it is, and here's where to find us to continue the discussion. Yeah, and I think um, we should probably do what uh, we did before as well, where we had a, you know, we, we went in Open Source Summit, we went to uh, to the Arc restaurant in um, in the Fairmont waterfront. And we told people what time we were going to be there. And we all sat down and we had just real casual conversations. Um, perhaps we can do something similar as well and just say, hey, we're going to, uh, Kyle and I and anyone who wants to attend, you know, we're going to, we're going to be here. You, you should, you should be there as well if you want to ask us detailed questions on, on this. So in other words, yeah. move the Q&A to, uh, to, to an offsite. Yeah, NSM Happy Hour worked really nicely at OSS. Uh, I think that's probably a good tradition to keep going. So, so I think we should. Uh, I think we should do the same thing. Cool. Well, in that particular scenario, I think um, from the ONS Amsterdam, we don't have any other special uh, special sessions or like there's no s cloud native. Uh, uh, side uh, presentation or anything like that. So, um, so I think we can probably keep um, Amsterdam simple, and then uh, the focus after that's going to have to be on getting a proof of concept done with the um, uh, after after ONS Amsterdam, and then really having something that we can hit out of the park with over at uh, KubeCon. So this is like a a message we're coming, you know, like when network service mesh is coming and then we're, and then we, and then we arrive. So, um, cool. Is there anything else that we want to discuss on the Amsterdam or should we move on to, uh, to removing channels from API? I think that's good. Cool. So we have uh, removing channels from the API. So uh, that's part of the API arc, uh, review and, and architecture review. Uh, this is something that we're already actively working on. So I thought I'd single it out. So just some context beforehand. Uh, when we were going through the various um, um, through the various scenarios, one of the things that we discovered was that we would often every time that we would come up with a network service, we would only use one channel. And this pattern repeated over and over and over again. And so the initial idea of the channel when I, when I was creating the gRPC system was, or the, the, protocol, the protocol was that perhaps you might have a network service that might give you a data channel and a management channel and so on. But thinking more about it uh, after the fact, when we started discussing removing channels, uh, one of the things that I thought was, well, if you want a data channel for a specific thing or a, a control or management channel, those could individually be network services themselves as well. So you would, so if you need access to the management plane, you would explicitly ask for management in that scenario and not get it as a channel. And so, so I think it, it, in this scenario, we don't break any use cases. It would just be a, a, uh, we would just be using it as we as we currently are and simplify the architecture. Um, a quick question, if I may ask, this is Ramki. I'm still catching up on all the aspects. So any reason to seed management exclusively? So I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. What? Can you do what exclusively? Uh, no, so my question was any reason to sort of have an exclusive treatment for management? I mean, it's just another interface you want to deal with, right? Wondering, is there anything well, special we're trying to do there? Well, are, you, are you talking about the, the, the Kubernetes network interface? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Network interfaces, I mean, of course, for receiving raw packets, we need to open up interfaces. And of course, if you want like um, um, a separate management interface, yes, you do. But I also heard there is going to be some special treatment on for man uh, management interface, or did I read it wrong? Well, so, so I, you, you probably didn't quite read it wrong. This is actually a really good question, so thank you for asking it. One of the things that Network Service Mesh does is it leaves completely alone the Kubernetes networking. 
because all the other proposals to date make a real mess of the Kubernetes networking in the process of trying to get the things that we need for NFE. And so network service mesh just leaves that alone, right? And we bring in the L2, L3 connections for the CNFs you want to talk to. And, and it is most people, when they look at deploying CNFs into Kubernetes, they just treat the traditional Kubernetes interface as a magic management interface. And so if that's what you want to treat as your management interface, we have nothing to do with it. That's being handled by CNI. Does that make sense? Uh, can you repeat that last part again, please? Um, right, so if you're just talking about the interface that provides you your normal Kubernetes networking, your, your mm -hmm. Kubernetes network policy, Kubernetes services, that kind of stuff, right? We leave that completely alone. That's being provided to you by Kubernetes. It does it really well. Uh, they don't actually want to add anything to that that talks about interfaces or subnets. Um, and so we leave that be. Okay. Okay. And, and, got it. and, and, hmm. yeah. so, so if you're asking, why do we treat it specially? We treat it specially because the Kubernetes people don't want us mucking with it. Got it. No, no, makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Now, Thank yeah, you for I, the so, yeah, uh, this is perfect. Now, I was actually even further delineating among the interfaces which network service mesh wants. Is there a special treatment on management? That that I was actually there already. So, among I mean, not the Kubernetes management interface, but let's say you have a pool of interfaces, and then you know you may use one for your external management of the CNF, and other is actually the CNF data plane. Is there any special treatment? on that CNF management interface, which network service mesh owns. Looks like the not, not, yeah. Not from network service mesh's points of point of view, right? I mean, we treat it like any other cross-connect in the system. Um, you may decide that you would configure it in all kinds of interesting ways, given the tools that network service mesh gives you, but we just do what you ask. Okay. Um, this, is, this is what I was thinking, and tell me if I'm thinking it, it, this is too convoluted, but to me, I thought it was fairly straightforward that, for example, on this cross-connect project, or this, um, or call it a, a bridge domain provider, that the the, the NSM would just uh, would talk to the the, NS, the the NSM endpoint would arrange for the in effect the virtual physical connections, you know, whatever is underneath that layer two provider. And the and the uh, standing up the actual data plane demons itself and things like that, but the management could be you log into you you uh, you, you know you just talk you get an SSH into that container and, and issue VPP cuddle commands or the management could just be that that container um, has an IP. And uh, the management traffic goes through the IP, and it listens on uh, on uh, NetConf or RestConf. That's the way yeah, I was thinking of it. I, I think part of, part of what you're hearing here is you have choices. So many choices do you have, if you like them. <laughs> Yeah, like from a from a guidance perspective, the way that we're going to recommend people typically set it up is that you set up a network service endpoint or a ENSM that that exposes a network service endpoint that uh, that can provide you the functionality that you that you want. But if for some reason you're dealing with something that needs to have very fine grained tight controlled, you you have the ability to request for for that ability. And of course, you have to have something that can give you that, that control. Um, but, uh, but generally, like, from a management perspective, we want, we want to try to, to encapsulate that all within a network service endpoint for a given task. So if you say, I want a VPN, you say request VPN, you get a VPN. And or request a hardware NIC, you get a hardware NIC. Um, so So anyways, so we've, um, so we're in the process of removing channels from the API. So when you request a specific service, you're, the, there's, there's no longer going to be the concept of a channel. It's just going to be, you request the service and you, and then that, what you get delivered is uh, a cross connect to that service. Does, uh, does that make sense? Yes, and it's up to the service to arrange for 
uh, the management um, if, plane connection. Yeah, so by management plane, I mean to the S remote SDN controller, if there is one. But actually, the management network, it could be as one of the services. Uh, you request, okay, give me a management inter management interface, which is a service, and then your container or port will get that extra interface, which you will use in your application as a management. Yeah, I mean, that, that's actually exactly right, Sergey. So one of the things, a lot of the examples we have will show a network service endpoint just to somebody who accepts incoming requests. For Everybody's well. breaking up badly for me, so I didn't hear what Sergey said. Uh, do you, do you want to repeat that again, Sergey? Uh, so, um, is it better now? I mean, is it my internet connection or you can hear me well? You, you've sounded good to me both times, so I, I don't know. Okay. All right. So basically, I was just saying that uh, the actual management interface you are talking about can be considered as a service. So your application requests give me management interface, which is a network service, and you'll have your extra interface in your pod. And then you just use it for your management purposes. Exactly. That's what I was trying to say. You said it properly, Sergey. I probably said it improperly. It didn't use the right terminology. But yeah, it's just another. So um, here's where you've been incredibly helpful to us, Ramki, um, with your question. All the examples that we currently show show a network service endpoint just as something that, that pods connect to to get a network service. What they don't show is that network service endpoint could be consuming network services from other places, like consuming a management interface network service. Mm. And so that you will close that gap in what we talk about. So thank you so much. Okay, thank you. And if I may ask uh, uh, other question? Sure, um, please. On integration? Mm-hmm. Um, so, so far we talked about VPP integration. Is there some, um, how would you integrate, I mean, if you need with other, uh, you know, overlay solutions, for example, VMware, NSX, NSXT, is there some sort of mechanism to do that? Yeah, so no, we're, we're actually extremely careful about maintaining um, data plane agnosticism. There are a lot of folks here who got experience with VPP, so you'll, you'll definitely see some VPP data planes in the mix. But effectively, what ends up happening, what, what's starting to emerge is the network service manager will have a gRPC API that it speaks to whatever the data plane is and asks that local data plane to set up whatever has to be set up. Um, and so if you have a non-VPP data plane, you just need your data plane to expose that interface to the network service manager and everything should work fine. Okay, okay, very nice. Uh, is there any material sort of about that? How that processes? So this actually segues nicely into the review APIs and architecture, because um, Sergey, who does a ton of work on the code, finally sort of put his foot down and said, "Listen, guys, you have got to give me crisper definitions of what the fuck is going on with this a these APIs." And mm -hmm. so we're, we're yeah. the writing that document right now. Um, you know, but but one thing I do want to be really clear about is if you have interest in other data planes plugging in here, none of this stuff is set in stone yet. And so if you look at it and say, okay, I don't quite understand how I would do this thing that I care about, please bring those things up, right? Because generally speaking, often they involve discovering that we think a little bit more about what we're doing. Does that make sense? Yep, thank you. So one quick question, has anyone, has anyone gone over the presentation with you with the, uh, the narratives? Yes. Um, Ramki, that, that's directed to you as well. Oh, uh, <laughs> I am just uh, going through these uh, as we speak. Cool. Yeah, if you want, uh, if you have time after this, um, I can stick around and we can go over some of the narratives as well. And I can help you get a better sense as to what, uh, what it is we're doing. Sure, yeah. That would be great. Cool. Okay. So that's, uh, with that, let's go ahead and segue into the review. Uh, APIs and, and architecture. So in terms of uh, reviewing APIs, just to set the stage on there, um, so uh, a couple things has happened since we first wrote the gRPC uh, definitions. And one of them is we've got a much better understanding of the space uh, and the concerns that we're, that we're working on. And so 
as a part of it is trying to, number one, trying to uh, tighten up those, uh, those constraints and uh, to, have, to have our code reflect new learnings that we've, uh, that we've had. And part of it as well is to ensure that we get, uh, uh, like we said before, the guidance is uh, incredibly important. So we want to make sure that, uh, that everyone, like right now, we, each person will have a different, slightly different view as to what network service mesh is. And so we want to reduce those, uh, those differences as much as we can so we can get more effective communication and more effective, uh, more effectively uh, implement what, what we want to implement. So, so with, with that as the, the context as well, uh, so the, the first area that we started to look at was, was specifically the uh, gRPC endpoints themselves. So um, hey, Ed, do you, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because I know you've been working on providing some of the guidance. Yeah, so like one of the things that, let me actually see if I, I at the risk of showing a, a highly, we were just scribbling kind of deck, um, but you know me, I, I, I find pictures help almost everything. Um, we were trying to figure out, we were trying to sort of say, okay, well, what are the different reference points in the system? Um, and, you know, and what do they, what kinds of APIs do we have with them? So give me just a second, I will share this deck. I do apologize. It is not actually made for a presentation. It was actually made for folks to brainstorm together, but it has some really good pictures in it. And I think pictures- You need me to stop. I'll stop sharing. Yep. So you can Please share. Go. Okay. Cool. And this will probably help a lot of your questions, Ramki, as well. So, um, awesome. Thank you. So please note, we're not actually showing the flow of messages in this picture. We're just sort of showing who talked to with what API. Um, can everyone see the share? Yes. Awesome. So, um, and, and let me stick the link to the slides in the chat real quick uh, so that folks can get to it. Uh, generally speaking, I do all of my decks um, in a way that lets everybody get to them. Uh, right off the bat, so sometimes even when they're not even vaguely so. But effectively, if you look here, the, the components you have are, you have on every node, you have an NSM. Um, and then you know we've got also the Kubernetes API server, whatever the data plane is, this sort of gets to your question, Ramki. We don't much care what the data plane is, quite frankly, as long as it can do the work of the cross-connecting. Um, and then um, you, know, you have whatever pod you have that wants to connect to a network service, and then you have a network service endpoint over here in node two, the NSC. So the API that the pod uses over gRPC to ask to connect to a network service, we've sort of tentatively named the pod to NSM API because it's how a pod talks to the NSM. And that's also how an NSC would talk to its um, NSM to expose whatever service it provides. Um, obviously, we've talked about having CRDs for network services, network service endpoints and network service wirings. Those are just normal CRDs that you get from the Kubernetes API server if you're an NSM. Uh, we talked about the fact that the two NSMs have to negotiate peer to peer for sort of like what is the remote, what are the remote parameters we're dealing with here? What kind of tunnel, what kind of tunnel parameters? And that's been currently creatively named the NSM to NSM API. Please note, better names are always welcome. Um, and then this was the API I was talking about, Ram Key, where the network service manager talks to whatever data plane to handle the cross connect. And that's okay. a fairly cool NSM to data plane. And one thing to note here, by the way, is network service mesh only really deals with cross connects, right? So if you want a virtual bridge domain, um, that's a network service from our point of view. And we're perfectly delighted to connect you to that network service if someone is providing it. But, but because it's cross connect oriented, it ends up being hyper, hyper simple. You know, so you wouldn't have to configure a whole bunch of machinations in the data plane about this. You would basically just have to give enough information to construct the cross connect. Make sense? Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, sorry, if you don't mind, in the previous picture, so the by NSM to data plane, the tunnel is being set up by NSM by talking to the relevant plugin. Is that, am I reading it right? In the southbound direction. So, 
so what the NSM in the NSM to data plane asks the data plane to do is it asks it to create an injected interface for the cross connect into whatever the relevant pod is. And it asks it to stand up its local side of the tunnel, right? So NSM one would create this interface to pop the pod. It would create its side of the tunnel. NSM two over that same interface to whatever its data plane is creates and injects the interface into the network service endpoint and creates its into the tunnel. And the NSM to data plane creates the tunnel which will connect both of them, right? Yeah, most, most tunnels are sort of the, do we have the parameters matching, right? Am I sending VXLAN to the right IP address on the right port with the right DNI? Um, okay. You know, and then the same is true for most tunnel types. Um, there are some weird exceptions like GTP that are much more complex. But, but for most tunnel types, that's really what you're dealing with. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. So the, the second one that we talked about, and this is just showing the API enumeration, we talk sometimes about the ENSM or the external NSM. And this is just sort of showing that example. The way the ENSM works is it's just a network service manager that manages some aspect of something that is not in your cluster, in this case, a piece of your physical network. And so all the APIs stay the same. And NSM1 would still talk to the ENSM with the same NSM to NSM uh, gRPC API. And then your ENSM will talk whatever it is that it has to to your physical network function in order to set up its end of the cross connect. You know, that might be NetCompyang, it might be whatever. I mean, that, that's up to the ENSM to figure out. We just sort of ask it for something, you know, it advertised this certain network service endpoint and said, hey, I've got a network service endpoint like this over here, come ask me about it. And we said, okay, great, we'd like to cross connect to that. You know, let's do this. Make sense? Cool. Uh, the, the next example that we had here was you can also use ENSMs for multi-cluster behaviors. Um, because from the point of view of cluster one, cluster two is just something that's out there in the world, right? It's external to cluster one. And so you could have an ENSM that allows you to, from that would advertise some, maybe all of the network service endpoints from cluster two into cluster one. And then, you know, cluster one could then look them up, you know, see that you reach them via the ENSM and do the NSM to NSM protocol to the ENSM, which then would do whatever it has to do in cluster two to set up its end of the cross connect. We'll actually stretch across. Does that kind of make sense to folks? Yeah, I mean, this model uh, looks a little bit um, strange to me because basically I don't see um, I don't see a value in having extra hop in the between the cluster communication because if the resource is advertised with with the um, um, with the IP address, then basically nothing preventing NSM one to directly connect to to NSM two. That's actually a really good point, and you could actually do that uh, now that you mentioned it. So that's actually why we have these discussions. You would need something here that would do the cross advertisements, but you're right. You could just have NSM1 talk directly to NSM2, and from you know NSM1's point of view, NSM2 is an external ES and NSM, but yeah, we should definitely rework that in this direction. Thank you for bringing that up. That vastly simplifies it. Mm -hmm. and, and then but the, the deal of uh, replicating the custom resource objects basically can be uh, given to the actual multi-cluster which comes with the Kubernetes cluster. So let them to synchronize and deal with the, all the API related activities and we deal only with the NSM related stuff. No, that, that, that's an excellent point. We should revise this diagram because I think your suggestion is much simpler in this case. Uh, so thank you. Um, Cool. Uh, the, the only thing I would point out is from the point of view of NSM1 sitting in cluster one, NSM2 sitting in cluster two is an external NSM because it lives outside the cluster. But it, it can't tell any different. It doesn't know. All it knows is it reached out to an NSM. Cool. So, so the last one. So the, bottom, the bottom line is that the NSM2 NSM protocol is, discuss, <laughs> is used to discuss between any NSM and any other NSM, whether they are an external NSM, an NSM endpoint, or just a normal NSM. Exactly. Is that correct? Exactly. 
And, and in fact, NSM1 doesn't know any different because it just looked up the right network service endpoint on the K Kubernetes API, found it, and said, okay, I'm gonna go talk to this guy. I have his IP in port. And the fact that he's not in the same cluster, not our problem. Make sense? Cool. Um, and then the last example we sort of showed was the proxy NSM. Um, and a proxy NSM is an interesting beast because essentially it's the realization that using network service wiring, I can actually have a proxy NSM that doesn't actually have the network service endpoint at all. Um, but it is being wired into the middle of the conversation so that I could bring in additional, I can basically put my thumb on the scale. So imagine a scenario where um, sometimes when someone tries to connect to the NSE, I would like to go and either do something to the physical network, even though the physical network's not handling the NSE, or I might want to do something like insert additional parameters like um, extra SRV6 SIDs um, into the tunnel parameters. Basically, the PNSM sitting in here as a proxy can do an enormously wide range of things. Um, it is incredibly powerful. I, I, we will often talk about it as being the lightsaber of network service mesh because it can cut through anything. But if you are not strong in the force, you're likely to cut your own damn arm off. <laughs> I hope it will not become PNSA box. <laughs> Can neither confirm nor deny the. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, one of the things yeah. with the uh, proxy NSM as well is um, so our understanding of this uh, at this point is that most use cases will be able to be solved with the standard net network service endpoint or the external NSM for controlling something that's out of the cluster. So. Uh, so the PNSM, uh, when someone says, oh, I want to bring in a PNSM, uh, to use a phrase that Ed uses, that's an invitation to, th to think more of your problem before you reach for it. Because it has a lot of, of power, there's a lot more power that's there, but with that power, there's also the ability to, uh, there's, the rails are all off, like all of the safeties are, are pretty much off at that point. And so, uh, so you should only bring it in if you if you absolutely if you absolutely need to. Yeah, with great power comes great responsibility. So, cool. Just um, uh, a then... quick, just mm -hmm. a quick suggestion. Perhaps um, we could put the brainstorming brainstorming on network um, URL to that Google Doc into the network service mesh group meeting notes. I somehow lost the link to that. I had looked at it earlier. Of course, like, sure. but it I, might be really time. I will drop it really quickly into the chat, and then I'll try and get it there myself once I'm not sharing anymore. Okay, um, if you drop it in the chat, I'll put it in the document. Yeah, just make sure it's labeled as "Please don't take this too seriously." It is a brainstorming document, not a declaration of the world. Um, and, and hopefully, Ramki, did some of the things clearer for you? Yeah. Oh, no, no. Yeah, it's getting very clear. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much oh, for the. Uh, God. Detail that is why we draw the pretty pictures. They, they take a while, but but they're helpful. <laughs> cool. Um, and then let's see what else did we have here. Uh, I think these were just slides that were copied in in case we were going to use them. And then um, we had some notes here where Sergey was sort of talking through some of the stuff. Do you want to talk through some of your notes here, Sergey? Uh, well, I guess these notes are uh, less relevant. Uh, since most of the stuff now is in the do document, API review document, and I encourage people to go through and make sure that, let's say, if you are interested in some applications, make sure that the current uh, API gives you uh, necessary tools to pass that information around between the uh, application and the user of that application. So please review and comment in the PR, which is uh, in the document. Yep, yep, excellent. So I think that's that's probably for the best. Um, cool. So anything else that, that you know, Sergey, Kyle, Frederick, that you think I should cover in this particular brainstorming deck that, that went on? So I think um, 
So the, the only thing that I think in terms of the PNSM, so like in the context of the discussion that we had, I think it makes a lot of sense when it comes down to actually, so at, at the end of the day, something that I would love to have come out of this is um, something that is something a little bit more formal than the, uh, than the brainstorming deck. So after we're done with the oh, architectural yes. review and so on, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm happy to spend time documenting all of this in the same way that we did the, what is NSM document before. Mm -hmm. you know and follow the same pattern but say this is the architecture and describe the the outcomes of it and describe in detail these are the messages and these are the, the this is the pattern and work through uh various uh various problems and something that would be absolutely fantastic and we'll tie this into what you're doing uh, uh tom is uh, one of the examples that we'll use in that in that architecture path as well will be going through what we did in order to make the VPP example work after we've gone through all of the all of the documents and that can turn into a tutorial effectively for people who want to implement their own cross connects as well so it ties all the stories together so I think like this is the beginning of that of, of that journey yes exactly and everybody please and I heard a comment understand that this that this is not VPP is just low hanging fruit the way I see it and and my own approach to this to get facts on the ground initially but i i don't see any reason why you couldn't do it with ovs dpdk for example it's just it, that the um it, that the daemon set and the endpoint or the external nsm has to manage the kinds of stuff that you would use to put to put you know to get ovs uh, running in a, you know, normally, and that it's that, that's uh, that, that it's just different stuff to do, and I would assume that once we have one done, we could extrapolate that to another to others. Um, there's parallel work done. The people who are, for example, are working on Multis have are looking at this all differently because they're, of course, messing with the. Uh, with the uh, Kubernetes networking API. But one thing they have in the common is they're trying to generalize the API or generalize the connection to the data plane underneath. And, and that's the idea is I think once we, once we get one done, then we can go back and make sure that everything's sufficiently generalized. You could literally unplug one data plane and plug in another even on an operating system or on a, uh, in an operating well, network. One of the other things that we've talked about a little bit is there may be more than one data plane running on a particular node because, for example, you know, not every data plane is, you know, is going to support everything. So you may have, uh, you know, a, a data plane that is very smart about how do you plug SRIO Venix in to your pods. Um, and then you may have a data plane that's very smart about remote cross connects and okay, trying to make so a single data plane is, is not, not necessarily your best plan. The question yep. is then, is there two NSMs in that pod, one for each data plane, if they're no, providing the one like a break just one the, to the other? Just, just the one NSM. That's interesting. That would require some additional bits in the protocol, I would think, so that we know. You're right, you're right, you're right. But I mean, this, this is the yeah. stuff we're going to start out fairly quickly, hopefully, as we you know, flesh out the architecture documents and so we can really put a fine point on some of these so, things. Um, just to clarify the problem statement, are we saying, so essentially there are two types of hardware clusters, like for example, one with SRIOV and then one uh, without SRIOV running OVS DPTK and is, the goal is to NSM be able to seamlessly interconnect them using an overlay? No, not quite. So the, 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 the thing, and we have other, you know, you know some of the stories that, that, that uh, narrative decks that, that, that um, Frederick was talking about showing you in the next hour. Um, it, it turns out that, that, that nobody actually wants an SRIO VNIC. Like that's a meaningless request. What you really want is an SRIO VNIC that provides some network service you care about. It's plugged into some network. Maybe it has some ACLs or some QOS applied to it. Um, it has at least a certain kind of bandwidth, et cetera. And so network service mesh expresses all of that is still a network service. It's just that you would request a network service using a mechanism that is basically, I would like my mechanism to connect to this network service to be an SRIO VNIC. Um, and then we will connect you up to that. And then whatever it is that's running inside your pod, whether it's a, 
DPP instance or some handcrafted DPDK thing or whatever. It, once we've given you the DPDK, once you're giving you the SRIO VNIC, it's up to you what you want to do with it. All we're telling you is this is an SRIO VNIC. It is connected to the network service you asked for. But actually, you're looking at it much more, I guess you're looking at it more like a smart NIC, right? It's not really SRIO. You're looking at Oh, no, it doesn't, doesn't have to be a smart NIC at all. It doesn't have to be a smart NIC at all. Like even uh, I, No, what I mean is the smart NIC type capabilities, more advanced capabilities. I'm trying to, you know. Oh, it doesn't even have to have advanced capability. It doesn't have to have advanced capabilities. I could even take a dumb NIC that doesn't have SRIOV at all, and I want to get a network service via that NIC. That NIC is plugged into a top of rack switch port. And that top of rack hmm, switch port, that top of rack switch port is network service. Make sense? Okay. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah, basically, yeah, you want to be endpoint agnostic. It could be anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, but, but you want to make sure that if I give you, if I do connect you to that hardware network, that it's actually doing the thing you want it. Like, if you want a particular network service, um, you should be getting it. And that network service is some co combination of you know the bandwidth of the NIC, the network it's connected to, the features that are applied to that port in terms of QoS and you know ACLs and other kinds of things. All of that is sort of a, the union of all of those things is your network service. And, and this is one of the big realizations with network service mesh is nobody actually wants any one of those things in isolation. Those are sort of meaningless things to ask for in isolation. You really just want to be able to say, this is the thing I want and get it, right? Because nobody also gives a damn what network they're connected to. They, they care do they get this particular sort of services they should get. Cool. So in the, in the interest of time, uh, I have one other item that we need to urgently discuss, and then uh, I'm happy to stick around afterwards as well to uh, talk with you, Ramke. So oh, thank you. So the last item is, uh, was, so next, uh, next week, I will not be around because uh, I'll probably be on an airplane or on my way to an airplane. Uh, because I have to be there for the ODL DDF uh, as well. So if uh, if anyone, so so I assume that uh, people s still want to run the meeting next week. So I'll need someone to uh, to step up and run the meeting for next week. If if nobody else is available, I'd be happy to do that because I am. Um, not going to, unfortunately, ONS next week. Sounds great. Cool. And um, so... Uh, I don't know how to do it, but I, in other words, I don't know how to manage the Zoom stuff. Um, we, we, all get by with a little help. We, we all get by with a little help from our friends. The good news is the Zoom stuff is pretty self-managing. Um, basically, once the first person connects to the Zoom meeting, uh, the recording starts. Once, okay, the last good, person good. Yeah. Once the last person disconnects from the Zoom meeting, the recording stops and it's automatically published to YouTube. So just keep in mind cool. you're being recorded. Okay. We, we, we don't have the PNSA in here, but, but it's close. <laughs> cool. And uh, with that, is there any last minute items that anyone wants to cover or should we close the meeting now? Cool. Well, again, thank you everyone for uh, for attending. Actually, and you, oh. quick question, because this is recorded and published to YouTube, do we want to jump on a different bridge with Ramki after this? Yeah, I was going to recommend that. Um, so, Ramki, I think I sent you on the chat my email and number. Or on IRC, so, do you want me to? Um, should I call your uh, number directly? Uh, just just text me, and then I will get you the information about where we're jumping to from here. Because we'll want to share okay. slides and stuff. Cool. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Later. Yeah. Cool. I might join you later too in about fifteen minutes just to listen in. Cause... Oh, perfect. Ping me on. Ping me on IRC. We're gonna go on. All right. Cool. Thank you.